Welcome to another Top 5 here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I am Brandy. And I'm Alan. And today we're going to talk about a tough topic. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk Top 5 Funniest Films. And I, I'm i going to say so that it's <laughs> kind of safe to assume that this is sort of like a personal choice. Very I personal. mean, funny is so subjective mm. to yeah you know, the, and it was so person. tough for me to narrow down i was sitting there being like should i have a rubric of like laughs per minute yeah, or exactly. like how many times i've watched it since has it stood up do i laugh for time eventually i just had to say you know fuck it and choose <laughs> exactly i mean i'm looking at my list right now and i could be like you know what i can put another five on yes. here so let, let's yes. just do this let's do it yeah and actually i'm gonna cheat right off the bat i'm gonna have a tie for my number five because i couldn't decide right. it is a tie between the jerk and some like it hot mm. <laughs> two very different kinds of films but actually they both rely on a lot of silliness and a lot of sort of wordplay kind of stuff mm -hmm. um I just saw The Jerk for the first time, like, last year, and I couldn't believe that it lived up to the hype of being, like, one of the funniest movies ever. I was I was floored and, like, immediately needed to watch it multiple times again. And then versus Some Like a Hot, which I've seen so many times, don't even remember when the first time I saw it was because I was probably a kid, and every time I saw it, I was older and more of the jokes made sense, kind of, you know? Oh, <laughs> you know? I get it now. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, classics. Yes, absolutely. Um, one of those films is in my list as well. Oh, okay. I'll let you guess which one later. I bet I can guess. Moving on to my number five funniest movie. It's from 2005. The 40-Year-Old Virgin. I think this is Judd Apatow's best film. I think this is Steve Carell's best movie. I mean, the premise of it is just silly to begin with i mean mm -hmm. the guy who's in his 40s and he hasn't been laid in his entire life uh and the way his friends kind of like help him out you know to approach women and interact with them um hit me in a kind of a, <laughs> in a way <laughs> where yeah i won't get into it too much but i think <laughs> steve carell is at his best <laughs> where he is sort of in a situation where he doesn't have control and he kind of has to like <laughs> swim his way out of it or drown um, I mean some of his <laughs> other work uh, you can see it uh, repeated uh, I mean every time very funny man he tries to like approach women and close the deal it just doesn't work out to his favor it's just <laughs> Super awesome, super funny. So it's a good movie, but I don't think it's as good as the Apatow movie I have at number four, which is Bridesmaids. Okay. Uh, okay. Like we said, this is this is a personal thing, but um, you and I saw Bridesmaids together, mm -hmm. and I think that you were actually uncomfortable by how funny I found it. Oh. <laughs> like I was like dying the whole yeah. time, yeah. and Alan was just like. What's going on over there? <laughs> like, yeah, I think I yeah, it. I think the reason why I was like so so about this movie is just to counteract your enthusiasm for it. You were just like hooting and hollering and I was like, what is this crazy person doing? I needed that movie, okay? Like I needed it to be that crazy. I thought all the actresses in it were just amazing and I can't wait to buy it and watch it a million more times. Yeah, I mean I watched it again. I mean, I watched it twice in the theater, and I, I will admit it's definitely super funny. Um, I mean, I, I just, I, I can't even describe like why am why am I like being resistant to this film? This um, particular comedy in this film speaks to me more than it speaks to you. Possibly it's okay. that that must be it. I mean, I have nothing against it. I think it's a really really entertaining <laughs> film, not just for women but for men also. But mm -hmm. there's just something about it. Maybe, maybe I'll rent it or, or buy it and watch it again. Just super analyze it like why am i like hating on the film like deep inside i don't know all right moving on to my number four movie my number four film is from 1987 mel brooks Spaceballs, <laughs> star wars totally flipped on its head uh i mean this movie is just silly like mm -hmm. every everything about it from the characters to the plot uh i mean i don't even know if i should really describe it because the plot is probably the least important thing no. about that movie i mean i couldn't you even have, tell you what it is where you, right have, <laughs> where you have two characters that battle each other with their schwartz it's kind of <laughs> i mean you know what they're going for but I mean, everyone well, in that film... Why don't you tell us what they're going for? I don't know if I get it. Let's not go into it too much. Uh, I mean, Rick Moran.
Stefanis, Bill Pullman, John Candy, um, just everyone, Daphne, Zuniga, just all working at this high super level uh everything about it i mean it's one of those movies where I, if it's on tv i'll watch it from there to the end um and if it replays i'll watch it from there to the end as well so i mean it's super super fun so solid <laughs> okay okay <laughs> my number three this is a film where i felt this way i think a lot of people feel this way the first time i saw it i was kind of like whoa that was weird second time really good third time you finally start to understand the genius and then it's just funnier every single time i've seen it probably a dozen times every time it's funnier endlessly quotable wet hot american summer mm. this movie is so strangely genius like it should just be a summer camp spoof mm -hmm. but there's so much more going on and all the actors in it are just spot on and christopher maloney as gene i mean that's got to be one of the funniest comic creations Mm. ever okay. <laughs> I mean ever okay. and I don't I mean every line in it is absolute gold mm -hmm. I have nothing more to say it's perfect <laughs> I have nothing more to say either because I haven't seen it unfortunately You're so weird I know and you have to see it like three times before we can even talk about it <laughs> I watch it three times huh? it takes repeated yeah. viewing to yeah. understand the mastery so you watch of it today film. and then you watch it again in like two weeks and then you watch it again and then then we can talk about it. I'm okay. We'll, we'll do that. We'll have like a round table <laughs> on Wet Hot American Summer. Ah. Okay. Moving on to my number three. Okay. These next couple of films. Okay. I I guess I had to cheat a little bit too because they're not like they didn't like make me laugh out loud, but they gave me the most enjoyment from watching okay. them. Okay. I couldn't make a list about comedies if I hadn't put screwball films okay right? screwball comedies my number three film is from 1941 and it is preston sturgis's the lady eve that's a great movie. I, I love this film so so much barbara stanwick is this sort of con woman who mm -hmm. seduces poor henry fonda man henry fonda from the beginning of that film he just had no clue what he was mm -hmm. getting into literally tripping over himself the yes. entire movie literally. he trips over barbara stanwick's feet he trips over like a when couch he, goes, yeah, like, he has he a ham dropped on him <laughs> he he has like a curtain fall on him but it meshes I mean, that kind of comedy with also great great dialogue when she's got the mirror and she's narrating what's mm -hmm. going on in the room making up stories about everyone and then also the sort of like how can you be such adult kind of comedy <laughs> yeah like it's got all three of those running at just the highest level it's so much it's so much fun seriously i mean <laughs> When it comes to Barbara Stanwyck, I mean that, and oh my God, I'm blanking on the other film, the the Bill, the Billy Wilder film. Uh, mm -hmm. God, I totally forgot what it was. Um, she's just super great in it, you know, super awesome at playing this sort of like serious yet funny side, and it's just it's a great film. So good stuff. Yeah. Okay, my number two, I kind of went with what I was saying before, kind of laughs per minute times rewatchability equals funniest um and that is a film i've talked about my love for before i don't know if y'all share it to quite this level but harold and kumar go to white castle <laughs> <laughs> i have nothing bad to say about this movie. right i can't even i mean I, i've talked about it before on other top five so i don't want to repeat myself too much but it just was not an option to have it very high on the list because mm -hmm. i think it's just genius <laughs> they're the great neil patrick harris is awesome in that movie um have you seen the sequel i have seen the sequel it, it was disappointing but are you I, excited about helen kumar's christmas i was way more excited before i saw the trailer which is not that great but <laughs> i'm not really a person who lets bad sequels mar how i feel about the original mm -hmm. so i still consider this a perfect little little thing for me in my life <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> to awesome pull from the sure. shelf when i'm having a bad day harold absolutely Kumar, go to white castle yeah that's a great great movie yeah um oh, okay going back just really quick barbara stanwick <laughs> that other film i forgot double indemnity okay oh i thought you were trying to think of a comedy that's oh no i was talking I was about like, like drama and comedy mixed together oh, okay. anyway <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to my number two film, um, Like the Lady Eve, this film is one of those movies that I can watch and just be super satisfied every time I see it. It's from 1993, and it is Groundhog Day. This was, like, so um, close to making I my mean, list. To me, this is, like, one of Bill Murray's, like, top 
three films mm -hmm. ever, you know, just the way he just relives the same day over and over again. And really, it's kind of like he goes through like the state, like the different stages of like death. <laughs> it's like denial and then yep. anger and then uh, acceptance, you know, at the end. And each way... one a different pure vignette of a type of comedy. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. And the way he kind of like manipulates the situation where at the end everyone knows him and he just seems to be everywhere saving everybody's life all of a sudden and um, mm -hmm. the way he kind of like tricks these other people and everything it's just super funny and touching and it's a great performance great from delivery him. of and, so and many McDowell, kinds it's of just comedy. yeah it's great so yeah it's it's one of my favorite movies mm -hmm. period so. yeah Okay, my number one, I'm prepared to defend, okay? Um, <laughs> That's a great preface. <laughs> I saw this film in the theater in the year 2000, and didn't, I thought it was going to be good. Couldn't even prepare myself for how hard I was laughing. We have about four other people who all felt the same. This has been a movie that my friends and I have watched over and over again. I honestly think it is some of the purest, funniest comedy I have ever seen. And it is a Disney cartoon. It is The Emperor's New Groove. It is the funniest movie I've ever seen. I am so dead serious. <laughs> I can't. Like, you haven't seen this one either. No, no, I've seen okay. it. I've seen it. I can't talk to you if you don't think it's funny. Because <laughs> it's so perfect. It's got, like, the whole buddy comedy bromance thing going on. Some crazy absurdity. A sidekick after glorious sidekick. And just action comedy and absurdity and it's to the point where like there a funny voice made me almost fall out of my chair laughing like it is so good <laughs> i will I, honestly... I will okay i saw this film after we did our top five disney movies yeah and okay i will give you that it is very funny i mean there are times where i was laughing out loud uh i mean david spade as a llama i mean that's pretty llama like face. well that's yeah. kind of out of there yeah um i would not put this in my top five disney films unfortunately but i mean it's it's pretty entertaining you know i mean if they haven't seen it if you know if the people out there haven't seen it they should definitely check it out uh um, the, I love they'll it. be entertained. So. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right. You love it. <laughs> Speaking of films we love, my number one, you've already mentioned it, Some Like It Hot. The A Find named this the funniest film of all time. Yeah. I am 100% with film. them. I mean, we've mentioned this before, but there, there's no way we can talk about a list of the funniest films ever made and not talk about this movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, every everything about it, it was perfectly cast the the dialogue is on point the the direction is crisp yes. um, tony curtis and jack lemon two two of the greatest duos ever you know uh tony curtis with his great cary grant accent oh. and jack lemon who does who is completely not convincing as a woman but yet <laughs> we totally buy into oh, it it's just, it's just so awesome <laughs> um marilyn monroe is just one of those iconic mm -hmm. movie stars you know when she's on screen she is you know the only person on mm -hmm. screen pretty much um the the supporting characters joey brown is osgood uh is great um even you know george what george raft is spats colombo i mean he <laughs> makes an impression um just everything about this movie is, is crisp and, and sparkles it's and so it's good. just so awesome. Um, I recently showed this to another person who doesn't even like like old movies or black and white films and they were just laughing like throughout the entire thing and that just brought so much joy <laughs> to me and it has one of the greatest last lines ever yep. in any movie. I'll put that up with anything. Okay, let me stop because I can keep going on forever. It is great. And I just noticed the other day that it's finally been added to Netflix streaming, if you've never seen it so before. So you have no excuse to not watch mm -hmm. it. Put mm -hmm. it on your queue at number one. Mm -hmm. If you still have Netflix, that goes into a <laughs> different, these, yeah. Yeah, different thing. But I didn't mean to bring up a sore subject. <laughs> that does it for our top five funniest films. If you have any that you'd like to suggest, so I many. know there's a lot out there. Please... Let us know at MacGuffinPodcast.com, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. See ya.